The Classy Gourmet, where you will learn secrets from the top chefs in the area. We're going to do a stuffed French cut chicken breast with um, goat cheese and prosciutto ham. And then we're going to do a roasted uh, angel haired pasta with peas, carrots, and some red onion here. And we're gonna go ahead and start with the pasta. Now, people always think that roasting pasta is kind of like a redundant, especially when you're using dried pasta and then you're roasting it. But you're gonna find that what happens when you roast pasta is you get an extremely earthy taste coming from that pasta that would normally just be dry and not necessarily dull, but it just wouldn't have the flavor that I'm looking for for this dish. Okay, now we just took some olive oil and we're gonna roll this pasta in olive oil and get it all nice and coated. Now it's very important that you coat all the pasta, but you don't overcoat it. You don't want it laying in a sea of oil, okay? Now we're just gonna throw this right into a 400 degree oven. As I said, we're gonna throw that right into a 400 degree oven for approximately five to 10 minutes. And you guys are gonna be very impressed with that. Now, my chicken. Here we are. Now, we have a chicken breast here. Now, the difference between an American chicken breast and a French chicken breast is very simple, and that's this wing bone right here, okay? And that's very important when you're working with a French cut chicken breast. The wing bone is always attached, and all the other bones are taken out completely. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to put a little pocket, just like so, leaving the rib meat on, okay? We have our goat cheese here, and we're gonna add a little bit of prosciutto ham to it. We're gonna go with some salt and pepper. Now, my favorite is to actually add the rosemary and the garlic in with the stuffing. Just give them both a quick chop. Now, the garlic has actually been roasted for a short time. Um, not to the point where you're going to make a paste, but just so you have some serious flavor, the roasted garlic flavor. And rosemary, make sure you don't use any stem because you're gonna have a problem if you do. Basically what's gonna happen is somebody's gonna break the tooth, and that's not a good thing. Okay, now we're just gonna mix this up real quick. Get it all nice and combined together nicely. And if I smell correctly, that pasta is just about ready to come out. Now we have this beautiful little pan here. Now we stuffed this a little heavy. I'm gonna put a little bit more in. A little olive oil over the top. And then I'm going to interchange with the pasta. Salt and pepper on the top. Let me do a quick wash. Salt and pepper over the top. Beautiful. Now we're going in and we're coming out. Now this is exactly what you're looking for when you're doing a roasted pasta. Okay, you want a nice brown, hearty looking pasta. And what I'm going to do with this is go straight into the water. We've got the water sitting here boiling. And don't worry about the excess oil that's on the pasta. That's actually gonna work for you. Most people are surprised to put pasta into a pan and actually have the water temperature goes, go up. But that's what happens if you roast your pasta properly. Then we're just gonna let this go for about seven minutes. And while that's working, we're gonna start a saute pan. 
to finish off this pasta. Do, 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 do. Now, you'll find that on the recipe, I'm talking about using pearled onions, which is a very nice contrast. But what I want to go with today is something that's a little bit different. I want to do a red onion along with my carrots and my green peas instead of the pearled onions. And I'm doing a very fast, very thin chiffonade of the red onion. And I'm actually going to add that really quick at the last minute. And now we've got our olive oil in the pan. I'm going to leave the garlic cloves whole. And I love garlic, so. Then we're going to go ahead and just, now the pasta is going to take exactly seven minutes, maybe a little bit more. If you're working with dried pasta that's not roasted, you'll find that it will cook in approximately, uh, especially uh, angel hair, it's going to cook in approximately six minutes to seven minutes. If you roast the pasta, you're getting rid of all excess liquid that might be in there which is going to be very little anyway, but definitely give it to seven, maybe a little bit longer and you'll be fine. And don't forget pasta, always al dente. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add our carrots in with our garlic. We're gonna go ahead and give it quick salt. Now I'm going really heavy on the pepper here for a reason, because I'm a, I love pepper. <laughs> then we're going to hit it with the salt. Then we're going to, now these peas are frozen, feel free to use frozen. A nice little saute going there. Oh, the pasta is going to be delicious. And you'll see that I'm not adding anything other than oil to this actual pasta dish. And because the pasta, I'm serving the pasta hot, a lot of people would say that you should cool it. We're going straight from the water. Hold it for a second and straight into the olive oil. And we're going to move this out of the way. I'll just move this over here. Turn that one off. Give a little bit more of a toss, toss, toss. A little bit more olive oil. Salt and pepper. And if you have a little extra prosciutto on hand and you want to use it, feel free. Thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and throw this little bit of this prosciutto in. Just for kicks and giggles. Okay, there you go. Then we're going with the onion. What we're going to do here, we're going to take and we're going to twirl the pasta in the center of the plate and get as much of the veggies around coming down off the top as, as you can. Now, we're going to take this and we're just going to slice on the bias like so. Four slices is good. If you want to go five, go five. But I, to start off with, if you go four, I think you'll be very pleased with what you come out with. And then we're just going to take this and we're going to just do a quick little circle around the dish, making sure that the top, the bone, is actually exposed, and then just hit it with a little bit of fresh parm. Now that is an excellent dish.